Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome on board on our next VGate Peer Learning Webinar. Today, we are going to talk about how we can empower women through skills development. Very, very hot topic. Uh, skills development, not only for women and women entrepreneurs, but also for, uh, for all the generations that are yet to come for our better creative future. Uh, my name is Gabriela kostovska Bogoeska. I have the honor to be your host, your moderator today on behalf of the VGate platform. VGate represents a one-stop shop for women entrepreneurs. Uh, I might say it's a bit uh, one of the biggest uh, support networks are on European level. Uh, and we are very, very happy to have uh, a support of many, many different women entrepreneurship organizations across Europe. So women economic empowerment is basically a transformation process achieved through, among other things, skills training. So at the same time, encouraging entrepreneurship and empowering women to become not only wage earners, but also job creators is one of the most impactful steps we can take in addressing some of the disparities we see today. And I think that's, that's one of the key goals that we all have. Myself, we get my organization, Foundation for, women, uh, for Management and Industrial Research, and of course, our guest, gay, uh, great guest today, sorry. So... I'm very pleased that today I'm joined by three wonderful ladies. They all have, uh, as you will see, and I will, you, you will listen a little bit different backgrounds, working in a bit different setups, but I can, I can freely say that they all share one common passion, and that's how we can support women to become more economically independent and how we can support each other in the overall process. So we will, we will be talking about an innovative platform supporting your digital transformation. This will be presented by our dear guest, Loredana Flego from Nero Subianco. Welcome, Loredana. Pleasure to have you on board today with us. We also are going to talk about and listen a little bit about an education and support program for women farmers happening in the in Hungary, it's called Talenta Program, which will be presented by our dear colleague, Margit Batiani Schmidt. She is the president of the Union of Hungarian Women. And last but definitely not least, we're going to talk about uh, what is happening on the ecosystem and uniting the ecosystem in Macedonia, in my host country, how we are connecting and empowering women entrepreneurs and stakeholders, which will be presented by my dear colleague, Emilia Andonova. Uh, and she will be talking on behalf of the National Platform for Women and entrepreneurship. Welcome on board everyone once again and it's a pleasure to be part of this wonderful webinar and welcome to my dear guests. So without further ado I will invite them to join the floor but before that I would just like to emphasize that uh, this is a webinar format so if you have uh, we, we don't have the chat function if I'm not uh, mistaken. So if you have any questions, please you, use the Q&A uh, box on the bottom of the screen, and I will be taking care of uh, taking care that I, uh, you know, pose those questions to our presenters. Just make sure that you write the name of our speaker so that I can direct the question directly to them. Thank you very much. And let's start. Let's kick and let's talk about good practices and learn a little bit more how we can support our women uh, and women entrepreneurs in Europe. So, Redana, welcome on board. The floor is yours. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, about your organization, and above, above all about uh, DITA, the innovative platform for our digital transformation. Yes. Thank you very much for joining. The floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Gabriela. Uh, for me, it's a pleasure to be here. And I would like to thank, really, WeGate, uh, you all, you all panelists, because I didn't meet you before, and it's a pleasure to be here and to start new cooperation with you for new projects for empowering women. And um, my name is Loredana. I'm talking from Venice, from Italy. I'm uh, an international and a European Union project manager. And uh, during my past life, my past work experience, I've been managing many uh, business um, federation and association uh, in uh, different uh, industrial sectors, uh, focusing on the women empowering and uh, uh, for creating many, many opportunities of uh, skilling, upskilling and reskilling for women. And that's why I'm here because I think that uh, Little by little, uh, with some tools uh, and a tool that uh, I will uh, present now, could be very, very important for this uh, um, women empowerment uh, 
uh, future. So we started out to, to, to present uh, something that we have created under a European Union project. But I think that we, we can do something together with you and with all the people that are listening to us for increasing these projects for women. Now I'm going to share my screen and I show you what we have done. <laughs> Let's check. Okay. Okay, I hope that everybody can see. So we have uh, created, we have launched this very interesting program. Loredana, not yet. Sorry to interrupt, but we still yeah. don't see the, the screen. Can you see it? Not yet. No? no. Not yet. Let's check. It's starting. Okay. Yeah, you can okay. present as well. <laughs> and perfect. That's fine. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay. It's a, a program under the Erasmus Plus program. That's a project. Uh, the, call, the, the name is DITA, the Digital Industry Training Atlas. And DITA supports WeGate. Why? Because it's a tool. Uh, it could be a tool for supporting skilling process for women in business, a way to upskilling, but also for reskilling. Why? Is an online catalog that aims at to connect training schemes all around Europe that are focusing on the digital transformation to enable technology and also new age domains, but also to display and to match the connection between and among different training programs and organization. So user can also able to find the programs that fit to their needs and also to the needs of their organization, to their employers maybe. It provides a mix of training opportunities uh, uh, on, the, in the, on the basis on the needs to industrial sectors challenges, because you know that the challenges are very, very uh, are, are many and uh, year after year, we have new needs for industries and for the labor job, labor market, and to increase the access to upskilling and reskilling training opportunities. Uh, we have uh, made a consortium of seven partners for six different countries. So Italy, Austria, Italy again, Spain, uh, Belgium, uh, Germany, and Portugal. And what we have done, we have analyzed the situation about the digital transformation in Europe. So with a specific fo focus on each country about the application to real industrial environments. So the digital transformation going vertical, we have explained, we have demonstrated some case studies and the training co-design mechanisms. I mean, the reconnection of the learning outcomes that we will see later. Because the catalog, our project uh, catalog of the DITA, DITLA, our atlas work in this way. Now I open this website. DITA project EU is the website. So if you open it, you will find also this part that is our digital training atlas. Discover the digital catalog. You see, we have Europe, many countries in Europe. Here, all the training organization and also all the women organization, all the women-led enterprises, all the women-led uh, businesses can insert here their organization, their association. And in this way, the user can find the organization and can see the activities that are undertaking, undertaken also for women that are planned for women. I give you an example. If I wish to find some organization in my country, I can see that there are this organization. 
I can click in this one and I can see that there is this organization that can offer one course, one course what for, for digital transformation in different area. And if I can open, if I can click on detail, I can see the business, the courses that are provided and what I need. But I'm talking about the digital transformation, the digital skilling. Here, you can see all the different digitalization training opportunity. So targeted per sector, cloud computing, simply new media technologies, something more strong, more important in this period as the artificial intelligence, cloud computing, cybersecurity, ICT management, and robotics also. So all technology. I think it's very, very important. This, the, the tool is very important, especially for many, here we have the university, for uh, uh, many opportunities that could be um, that could be really uh, begin from different partners because what we offer is not just the opportunity to inserted courses or activities targeted for women. It's also the opportunity to create connection, and that's why I would like to make you see. For example, you see this is an organization. You can see training provider, the courses offered, but also an important thing, the connection. The connection, what? What is the connection? Connection is the opportunity to match two different organizations. For example, one winning organization and one training organization. Here is the meeting too. Why? Because now I'm going again here, you see here, because why? DITAR for women empowerment through connections is very important. I prepare for you three examples. The co cooperation mechanics through this connection and through this tool can permit this. One women organization is looking for a training organization working together to provide new courses for digitalization targeted, just targeted to women. A connection can take place through this platform, through this tool, and synergies can establish. Synergies about women targeted courses have already been established through some organization that you can find in this platform. Or you can contact me, or you can contact Gabriella, because we can make you see how this example is really leading. So, for example, the women organization can make aware about the skilling process needed for empowering women in the work and in the professional environment. Example two, training organization, not women organization, training organization can work together and connect through this tool to provide new courses in, dig in digitalization targeted to women. So a connection can take place and synergies can establish. So the training organizations can make aware about the potential abilities, about the knowledge and competencies that women can acquire through digital skill training. And third example, why do not launch a startup or a project in a digital training platform targeted for women on the basis of their need, on their of their needs. Just a digital training platform targeted for women, just this. Because professional career, skilling, upskilling, reskilling, new career, or digital green transition skilling. So that could be very, very interesting for this reason. And that's why I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity. Short, but not too short, because uh, it's uh, a starting for cooperative for making know what uh, we are doing for women and to connect with also the two, three panelists, uh, including Gabriella, because it's the presenter, with Margot, with Emilia, because I didn't meet them before. 
and through WeGate, uh, I met them. I'm sure that we are doing, I didn't know their backgrounds. I discovered wonderful women, but also wonderful professional people with whom we can also implement new activities and new projects for women. So thanks a lot and thank you for your attention. Thank you, WeGate. Thank you, thank you, Verdana, for sharing sharing the the, the the atlas, also for for all these inspiring words. And I do agree that uh, Vigate is not only about uh, not only Vigate, but all those great initiatives out there, including Data Project. It's not just about uh, the outcomes, the things that we are going to design, but it's moreover for these connections, for this joint energy, and for seeing the opportunities, what we can do in the future. I very much like the examples that you share because that shows the power. Of what what I've seen in in this in this uh, wonderful platform of yours is not just uh, it does not only connect the supply and the demand, but also it triggers training organizations to work together, but moreover, you know, it inspires others. What else can we do? Let's talk about digital platform for skilling and upskilling or women in general. Uh, let's talk about decent work. I know a lot of women that does not know how to exercise their right for decent work. And this is also very important. Just one of the topics that we can, that we can address. Thank you very much, Loredana, for just, you know, giving all those uh, inspirational ideas and examples. And I'm really looking forward to what what other things we can do together in the future. And I know that this is just one sample of, of, of all the amazing things that you're doing at the moment. Thank, Thank you and you. enjoy Venice. I wish I wish we will have a meeting or an XP <laughs> learning webinar there. Thank you. Without, so thank you. And now I would like to move on to Margo. Margo is one of, uh, I mean, uh, everybody here is part of our VGate community. Margo is also part of our VGate community council. Uh, the Council is the is the place where all these great ideas happen, and a lot of different organizations try to co-create good things for women entrepreneurship development in Europe. Margot, welcome on board. It's a very very good uh, opportunity for us to start discussing something very important, uh, not leaving anyone behind. That's one of the uh, principles that we have. In in my organization and in Vigate, not leaving anyone behind, even if. So if we talk about academic entrepreneurs, women academic entrepreneurs, but today we're going, and others, today we're going to talk about women farmers. So uh, let's let's see what uh, Union of Hungarian Women is doing to support them. And hopefully it will be inspiring our participants to do the same in their own communities. So Margot, the floor is yours. Welcome and thank you for, for, for taking the time to join us. Thank you, Gabriella, and I would like to thank for you that you are open for it, that I can I can share my uh, association, the Union of Hungarian Women Association, and our best practices and what we did and what we do this year in 2022. So uh, my name is Margit Batyany Schmidt. I am a farmer too. I have uh, three children. We have some family farming too. Uh, but uh, but I am focusing now in the NGO sector and uh, the family in agriculture, we are working with cereals. It's near to the uh, Austrian border, not far away from there. So I would like to share and I will show you my presentation. Okay, I think, all right. So the rural women entrepreneurs and economic empowerment of them. The Union of Hungarian Women Association, we established in 2013 with 17 uh, founding members. Our association undergoes constant development, which allows us to broaden our horizons. We currently reach more than 5,000 people directly and participate in around 200 events per year. We finance our programs through both national and international funds and applications. We have been formed to integrate successful national and international practices to improve the status of rural women. And of course, that with the rural women, we are working for the rural families too. We believe that our mission is to create and maintain active communication channels between these women and policymakers 
and chambers and state institutes and other non-governmental organizations nationwide, as well as playing a mentoring, coordinating and advocating role. Our main goal is to encourage rural Hungarian women to embrace their role in the family, to improve their quality of life, to protect their physical and mental health, and to inspire them to become entrepreneurs. The Union of Hungarian Women finds it extremely important to maintain long-lasting bonds with international organizations. For example, we are a member of the COFACE, this is the Families Europe. We recently became a member of the Women Entrepreneurship Platform, this is the VAP. And we have a consultative status in the United Nations Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC status. And of course, we are pleasing, uh, also participating uh, always in the event of the Commission on the Status of Women. This year, it was the CSW 66. And last but not least, we are actively particip uh, participating in the Copa Comcheca Women Committee as a member of the board. And we also maintain a cooperation of the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization. Our Ago. main activities. May I, yes. may I, may I just uh, ask you to put it, to put the presentation in presentation mode? I did it. It's it's frozen. We don't. Uh, it's just uh, as it's written in the chat. It's just uh, you know on the first slide, so we don't. Ah, only on the first. Okay, okay. I'm yeah. sorry. Maybe maybe put a, put it on the slideshow if if if. Can you put it on the slideshow now? Is it better for you? Not yet. No, because we can also see the see the notes, you know. So it's better to put it in the in the slideshow. And now this is no, no. Hmm. I'm sorry. You know, I am not a big technical. No worries. Just go down on the on the and find this as a cup. Go back. Uh, yeah, that's right. You know, just this. It's. Yeah, okay. Now is it okay? It's better? Now okay, it's so perfect. Now, now it's perfect. All right, no worries. Thank you. So mm -hmm. our, no worries. our main activities this year, what we all did, I have already mentioned the CSW 66, and uh, it was uh, this our parallel event that we held online with an amazing group of international NGOs from all around the world on securing a sustainable, sustainable future, gender equality, and climate change. Our most eminent project uh, uh, in this year, it was this Hugonai 100, the 100th anniversary of the death of Vilma Hugonai, who was the first female physician in Hungary commemorated in association with the UNESCO. And for example, with the UNESCO, we went to do a very big um, exhibition in, in the UNESCO house in Paris too. Um, last, but, last but not least, we held a traditional Women's Day conference organized by FICHA. This is the 8th of March. And uh, this is the Women's Day, just wait. Mm -hmm. All right, you name. It's good now. Okay. Uh, the next one is the helping women in agriculture. The women are the key actors in the management of sustainability in their communities, in their families. And this is what the United Union of Hungarian Women put in the focus of our work. We look at women as the key figures in helping to create a sustainable future by educating their children and their communities. They not only take responsibility in households, but on a higher social level as well. They take a huge part in managing food production, agriculture, water supplies, and forestation in most countries. What kind of problems the women face in agriculture and social status? Of course, they, they don't, uh, it's very hard to do it to assess the control of the resources to lack of rights to own or acquire land, 
and the poverty, more women live in poverty than men, and about the education. And you know that we have already spoken a lot of time about it, the, the representation in the decision-making processes. Therefore, uh, we started to do the, in, in 2021, the Talenta Who program. This is in the file of, uh, we created a Talenta education and support program for women farmers with the international agricultural company, Corteva AgriScience. The Talent A program aims to provide a wide range of professional, educational, and financial opportunities for Hungarian women farmers. This Talenta pro program and project, it was not only in Hungary before it, it was in Ukraine, in Romania, in Spain. And they, this is, uh, they have the wish to go to other European uh, countries too. Here you can see that it started in, in September 2021 and it finished in April. What kind of grant we got it for it? 40,000 US dollar, innovative education and support program for women farmers. This is the website, the talentahu.org. So you can check it. It's written here that how many participants were there, we did everything in Zoom based, uh, the education and uh, 29 person application were accept, uh, accept, accepted. Uh, it was, uh, you know, in Hungary, we have 19 counties and from these 19 counties, they will represent 15 counties. And uh, we did a little bit that uh, the age about the ladies, it's, uh, uh, about age 40 and uh, with children, more of them, they had children. And uh, the, the most important thing was that, that at the last, it was first, second and third prize because they had to do a project. And with this project, because we, we taught them how to do a project, how to build it and so on. And at the end, they got money for it that it's not only virtual should be the project, then with coaching too. So once more in the file, first the applicants attended several online classes to learn about community building, leadership, negotiation, presentation and sales techniques, social enterprise policies, project management, product promotion and marketing plan preparation. After business lesson, they continued with agricultural studies, soil management, alternative plant protection, agri dig digitalization, food safety, and distribution were in the spotlight. The last two classes featured in immersive presentation on sus sustainable agriculture and innovative crop protection with leading experts from the host Corteva AgriScience. About Corteva, I, I have to mention it that I met last week with the Corteva, uh, with, the, with the leaders of it, and they told that they would like to continue this project in Hungary too, because it was such a good, uh, good sample. And uh, the Corteva, they, they, uh, they support a lot of uh, rural women or innovation awards for rural women. So such kinds of project that uh, with gender equality, that the women gets the place, the right place in agriculture. So learning from this experience and thinking forward, we would like to continue as I have already told it. Uh, the program in the future, probably on a more complex, high functioning platform than Zoom, since feedback from participants has clearly shown that there is a great demand for this type of niche professional training. And, and I would like to mention that uh, during the COVID, it was a very nice community. So, so with the Zoom, they had friendship, they, they had knowledge sharing. So it was very interesting. And uh, the ladies who attended there, they were very happy with it. So this is some photos about the Cordova. Here you can see uh, the, 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 the leader in Hungary and with the communication uh, expert. These are the ladies who participated. 
And the other one, I would like to mention you and a, a new project, which we just started now in June in this year. This is in Hungarian GAEA, so G-A-E-A. -E so this is, uh, we are participating at the very first time as a project partner in a direct Brussels funded international project called this GAEA. The partnership was completed with us thanks to the Copa Kojaga, and we are the only Hungarian project partner. So here you can see this is the Union of Hungarian Women. This is the Erasmus Edu 2021 P All Inno, granting access to employment and entrepreneurship in agriculture for women. About this, what is this? Um, Partners recently started to work on mapping the available courses on national level and formulated so-called knowledge committees of highly experienced experts who will contribute to the project as observers. The main attraction of the project will be a boot camp where the target group will be able to meet project partners and stakeholders and also participate in a training to get useful tips and tricks. And here you can see this is 13 partners, what kind of partner they are and from which uh, countries, Germany, Belgium, Belgium, Cyprus, Greece, Spain, but there are, for example, the Czech Republic to map the needs of the target group and deliver a holistic training model. It's a little bit, you can see that the, the mission of it it, it, it looks like as what you were speaking about, Lorenda, Loredana, so that uh, the mapping and 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 what is the needs and 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 then uh, to 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 bring them a good uh, samples or solving the problems. Uh, so develop an innovative and interdisciplinary training and mobile app. Deliver a digital platform. So this is that. And who is the what what kind of target groups we are working with? Women, native in employment, nor, nor in education and training, uh, migrant uh, background too, so a higher education institution, academic and students, trainers, professional providing career, enterprises who are involved in the agribusiness, agribusiness associations, so I think that the Union of Hungarian uh, Women, we are here, enterprises, I told, organizations supporting agribusiness, policymakers, local communities in rural areas. And uh, the target group is wide as the partners would like to get a feedback from women and channel it to the policymakers in Brussels and on national level. So this is uh, where you can read about it, Gaia. This is the Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and uh, these two projects, what I wanted to show it. Uh, and uh, what I am very, uh, I, I just wanted to say it, that we started the work in, in 2013 and now next week we will be 10 years. So it's a very long work to, to get to involve in a so nice project. And of course, it's not only my work, so it's a, it's a common work. And we are believing in the cooperation. And thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. And thank you for, for emphasizing the cooperation. We also very strongly believe in that. And uh, congratulations, amazing, amazing work you have done with Talenta. And I wish you a lot of success with the new project as well. Uh, I like it very much that uh, we are we are trying to do and to, you're trying to design something that is going to be very very helpful for for women in agriculture uh because we don't see that often a lot of programs and uh, such a nice mixture of soft skills and very specific uh, agriculture related uh, trainings professional training for, for women uh farmers so we can we can of course uh, entitle them as women entrepreneurs as, as well i mean it's 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 all the same so thank you very much for sharing that and let's as you say let's keep in touch and let's next time talk about what uh, gaea 
will we'll be delivering. Uh, we will come back uh, with, with more questions uh, for Oladana and Margo by the end of the session. Now I would like to, to invite uh, Emilia Andonova. Uh, she is uh, from Foundation for Management and Industrial Research today sharing with us something that I think it's a, it's, it's a bit unique from my experience of what I have been seeing uh, across Europe when it comes to uniting at national level, uh, uh, how different stakeholders have uh, united around the topic of women entrepreneurship, a holistic approach, and that's the National Platform for Women Entrepreneurship in Macedonia. So Emilia, please, uh, the floor is yours. Pleasure having you on board with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gabriela. It's always a pleasure to see such uh, enthusiastic ladies and to be in this kind of webinar, uh, because even though that we are not in person, we can feel the nice energy and the bonding around, especially when we are talking of such uh, international uh, things that are happening and uh, in the same time about the topic as it is uh, women entrepreneurship. Uh, so, as uh, Gabriela already mentioned, I'm working in the Foundation for Management and Industrial Research, but we've been implementing one amazing project, which is so-called National Platform for Women Entrepreneurship. And uh, why I'm presenting it today, it's not just because it is a project, but at the same time, it's something that is lasting for years. And we know how hard it is to work into the field of uh, women entrepreneurship. So, we truly believe that uh, it's going to be sustainable. So, in this presentation, shortly, I'm promising you it's only pictures. I will take a tour or guide you through everything that we have done in the last uh, uh, two years. And in the same time, maybe inspire some of you that are facing with the same challenges as the women entrepreneurs in our country. So maybe you can, you can take uh, some steps. Uh, how we, we came with the idea. When I'm saying uh, there are not lots of opportunities for women entrepreneurship in Macedonia, I would say that we as a foundation started working on this uh, really far away into the years. So in the beginning, we have formed some kind of um, national council for women entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship. And in the same time, it was one pl platform for women entrepreneurship, which was not so active. So we decided why we don't uh, bond those two bodies in one and in the same time, make it like on a bigger level. So that's why we invited as well the ministers, the senior AO representatives, diplomats representatives, coming from non-governmental sector, business community. And in the same time, we agreed that this is like a really serious thing and serious topic that we need to, to work on. So we decided that we can create real policies that will contribute to the advancement of the women entrepreneurship in the country, but in the same time as well, support the, those women and organizations that are working into the field of women entrepreneurship. So as you can, you can see, this was the first event after um, in the beginning of Corona. So we are all wearing masks which means that even though it was triggered, it was in the same time something nice that we've, we've done it in person because it was inspiration for the many other things that were coming. Uh, before continuing uh, about the story of the national platform, I just want to add that we are as well in the same time co-creators of the strategy for women entrepreneurship in Macedonia, which was one bigger step in the same time with this platform to have a bigger influence on lobbying and advocacy for the women entrepreneurship rights and uh, some new programs. Uh, how we are structured, so we have uh, the creators of the national platform, which were consulted about uh, the creation of the platform and in the same time shaping some ideas about in which direction we should do it. Uh, so we as Foundation for Management Industrial Research are uh, one of the creators, together and in partnership with Association of Business Women and Macedonian Chambers of Commerce. We really appreciate having a, a council, so that's why we created a special body into our platform, which means that we are having regular meetings with organizations that are working in Macedonia on the field of women entrepreneurship. So this is like a big step for us because in the same time we are involved with the different organizations from different city, which means that in the same time we are shaping and getting all of the information coming from the local level so we can implement and do many, many different things on a national level. Uh, we were thinking that there are many topics to be covered and it has like a lot of things to discuss on. So that's why we started working with different kinds of groups because having uh, the main stakeholders in one group, it's really important, but having different kinds of topics and in different kinds of groups, it's like moving the things and, and started working on something that can be changed. 
So the first target group that we formed, it was policy and programs for women entrepreneurship. We contact all of the stakeholders that are really actively working in this field and that can support us. And as an as a outcome out of it, we, we created one kind of infographic. Uh, sorry, that is in non Macedonian because this is like a really on national level project. But uh, you can see that on the left side, we, we were like discussing about the prob problems and the challenges that are facing the women uh, entrepreneurship. And then on the right side, you can see that uh, they are the, um, uh, the changes that we can do and how we can support and help. Uh, why I'm stating this infographic and why I'm saying that it's important because uh, the infographic was shared with uh, all, in, all of the institutions and we had parallel meetings with the institutions discussing with them that maybe sometimes when they are creating the policies and programs, maybe they are not aware about the needs because sometimes, you know, there is some kind of project that is um, uh, not a project, sorry, about a grant that is opened, but in the same time, not all of the women entrepreneurs are having those kind of um, qualification to apply for such a grant. So this infographic was a nice base to see what is the current situation and in which direction the institutions can go in a way to create maybe better solutions or better, let's say, um, advices and in the same time programs that are going to motivate the women entrepreneurs to apply in their institution. Uh, then we continue with another thematic group, which was uh, access to finance, because we know it's very important to, to talk about finances. And when you are providing different kinds of supports in this field, you know that the women are really appreciating and coming and using um, the time for themselves. So we were really lucky to have on one place different kinds of stakeholders that were really shaping all of the kind of uh, finances that we can uh, somehow present to the women entrepreneurs. That's why we had in the same time as well um, uh, infographic, which is now in preparation and is going to be uh, shared soon on our web platform. Uh, and in that uh, infographic, we are stating the same as is the first one. What are the challenges in this topic and how we can we can change the thing and in which direction we can uh, we can move on. As you can see from the pictures, the situation changed. So this is now after Corona. Uh, and it was like um, possible to meet in person and to discuss. Uh, why we are really successful in this platform? Uh, because we are always working with the right people, which means that we as organizations cannot be always in the in, in every uh, in every sector. That's why we are consulting with our advisory board, which means that uh, we have representatives coming from academia, media, finance, government institutions, uh, non-government organizations. So uh, they are the one that we are meeting uh, on a regular level, and they are the one that are telling us in which direction we should go or in the same time coming from their sector, they are providing the steps about like, okay, maybe we should integrate more into the finances or maybe we should think about some kind of um, a promotion that will happen in the media. So it's really nice to have uh, such a experienced women on such high level positions. And in the same time, not only having their statuses, but in the same time uh, receiving the information just on time, right before something uh, come up uh, and it's new. Uh, after we were uh, discussing about how important are the thematic sectors that we are covering, in the same time we were working parallel with the sector groups, which we were consulting different kinds, not only of women entrepreneurs, but in the same time organizations, uh, consultants, and uh, different kinds of people coming from different institutions. So the first sector group that was implemented, it was on the topic rural environments and entrepreneurship, which means that we, we cover lots of topics and we try to uh, how to say to balance the, the daily life that the women in rural areas are having and in the same time inspire them and encourage them to work into the field of um, entrepreneurship and um, uh, as a result out of it we produced a policy brief which is a policy brief where we were um, stating all of the factors and how it is the real situation about these women and then we had in a couple of pages uh, recommendations this is as well really useful when you're implementing different kinds of, uh, of activities uh, because, uh, you know, when you print some kind of policy brief on every event that people are taking and they are really um, rethinking about how they can do some different things out of it. And in the same time, we distribute it to different institutions. So we can say that uh, we had a, a big support coming out from the institutions because in the same time, they were aware about the things that are happening 
um, around into the rural area in Macedonia. We didn't stop there. Uh, I don't know why my not my, uh, so um, then we continue with the sector group number two, which was digitalization perspective for women entrepreneurship. Uh, when we were uh, discussing uh, what, what are the challenges and in which direction we should move on, we realized that digitalization, even though that is something that we are using uh, in 21st century, it's still some kind, kind of taboo for the women entrepreneurs. And in the same time, it's not understood in the right way. So for this reason, we continue uh, talking about the importance of digitalization and in the same time inspiring the women what, what they can do. So soon there, is, there will be our policy brief number two, which will be designed and posted on our web platform, but in the same time distributed to the institution. Um, now I come to the, the, to the topic because everyone asks us, but how are you sure about the, the, the interest of the women entrepreneurs? And in the same time, why do you think that you know everything about the whole, uh, whole country of the whole, whole women? Uh, so this is how we are uh, communicating. Each year we have a survey, which means that we are providing a survey to the database of women entrepreneurs. And in the same time, from them, we are requesting to answer on a couple of questions, which are really important, not only for their business, but in the same time for, for seeing where they stay and uh, stand up and in the same time to see and measure the situation on um, national level. So out of the survey, we are producing each year barometer. And in, those baro in, the, in this barometer, we can find all of the statistics that are coming out. So to see uh, in which area we have more women entrepreneurs, uh, face uh, what kind of business they are having uh, what challenging they are facing and what are they, what are their needs so we are producing again some kind of recommendations and th those recommendations we are using in the implementation of the further on activities and based on those recommendations we are implementing uh, the next topic of the sector group of the thematic group and of all all of our other events that we are we are having so uh, just to mention that the barometer is on yearly level so that's how we make a comparison about what was uh, happening in the previous year how do we stand now are the things improved and what can be done in the next year what we are really proud uh, as a team are the women's entrepreneurship summits that we are organizing each year and why do why i say proud is because we are implementing um, different kind of panels for for the women's and um, in the same time we're inviting high level representatives coming from the institutions then we have um panel for, for the mayors to see how it is the situation on local level, panel with the women entrepreneurs, panel with the young uh, people and young uh, entrepreneurs, because it's really important to see and to inspire uh, them in the same time. And we why, why the summits are very uh, popular and they are really uh, visited is because we are providing uh, awards each year, which means that uh, we are providing awards for the best women entrepreneur in the category of startup business, small business, and um, medium business. But in the same time, we are providing awards for the organizations that are working in the field of women entrepreneurship and for, for young leaders. So this is from the 2021, and this is the summit from 2022. Uh, we had a nice, uh, nice panels and nice awards, and those are the winners from, from this year. Uh, we are implementing this kind of summit November, always in November, because we know that uh, 9th of November is the month of celebration of women entrepreneurship, and in that way, uh, in that way, we want to provide as well um, a special acknowledgement for for the women that are working uh, uh, and uh, and are uh, women entrepreneurs. So, um, as a as a platform, we really think that the organizations that are working in the field of uh, women entrepreneurship are really important. That's why we are working with them providing advocacy training, policy advocacy training program. Uh, this year we implemented for 50 representatives and in the same time we cover different kinds of topics. Uh, we think that it's really important to work with the organizations coming from the whole country and the, on the local level because in the same time you shape the, the feedback out for them but you are making connections and, and suitable partners so when it comes to the other activities you can easily implement everything that was on the national level. I mentioned a couple of times uh, youth, youth, youth. So we are really proud that we have youth ambassadors. This is a program where we are inviting um, uh, young people to, to promote the 
activities. It means that they are choosing their uh, interactive, creative way. They are promoting on, on social media by creating their campaign. And in the same time, not only promoting our activities and events, but they are inspiring members coming from the whole country, from different regions. Uh, they are promoting all of the events that can be interesting for, for youngsters and uh, that are connected with entrepreneurship. Uh, we have been working with a lot of mayors, which means that we are really thinking about the sustainability of this platform. Uh, and uh, having institutions on your side, it's the most key, uh, rule number key. So we were thinking that if we sign declaration for supporting uh, women entrepreneurship on local level, we will have the support from these institutions and we can implement many different kinds of events with them. And what we are really proud of is that in our application, we never wrote that we are going to form some kind of bodies into the um, a local um, local level, but as you can see from the picture, we visited many different places. So it become like an initiative that we're gonna form uh, councils on local level for women entrepreneurship. And then afterwards, lots of mayors decided that in those councils, they will provide budget for, for the women entrepreneurs that will apply in, uh, in this field. So we are really happy that we can say that something that, that was some initiative, it become reality and now more and more is, um, uh, uh, municipalities are following this idea and they are working um, on supporting women entrepreneurs on local level. Uh, we are implementing different kinds of uh, forums. I mentioned that we organize summits, which means that everyone gather in the capital city and we are having this national level things. But in the same time, we were thinking that it's really, really important to go on local because sometimes the problems that are facing in one local region, let's say, they are not the same problems that the women entrepreneurs are facing in the other, um, in the other region. That's why we made a comparison and we organized eight different forums, which means that, that we have eight um, uh, regions in our country. And uh, all of them were on different topic. I will not go more in detail, but I will just say, let's say in Velez, we had the topic of uh, achievements, opportunities, and potential for the development of women entrepreneurship. But you can see in Ocrit, we have the role of the women entrepreneurs in the development of tourism. We can see that different kinds of priorities, different kinds of topics, but in the same time, all of them were, were with one uh, uh, with one uh, with one idea or, or, or let's say um, a shared common, uh, which is uh, supporting the women entrepreneurs and what we can do in their region. Um, we are organizing webinars because we know that the women entrepreneurs are really busy and everyone appreciates uh, their time. So the best way to, to gather on one place the, the, the women entrepreneurs are by hosting webinars. So we are hosting webinars the same as Seagate is doing. And we are using this was from the previous webinar that we had. I'm slowly getting to the end of my presentation. I used two slides to present you what comes uh, in the next year and what we can expect from our platform. So maybe to inspire the participants that are here today, if they want to join us or if they want to, to invite us to, to take uh, some kind of action in their uh, activities that they are implementing, which means that next year we're gonna have annual summit. So I'm inviting each one of you that is interesting to join or if you have some kind of best practice to share, you can write to us and we can invite you as a speaker because we really want to hear the international experience and to bring it to our country. What we are very proud it is that we have our international appearance. So we are part of uh, WeGate and we are part of, of them. Uh, this is how we are connecting and bringing all of the knowledge from the European level to the national level. It's really a, uh, how to say we are a small country, but in the same time, we have to learn a lot and we want to stay um, step by step with, with the other active um, stakeholders so this is this kind of uh, being part in different kind of initiatives is making us even bigger um, as mentioned before we will organize one more sector and one more thematic group and the topics will come out of uh, this barometer that we've done this year so we will see what are the needs of the women entrepreneurs and we will go in that field um, I, I posted some kind of pictures of WeGate Summit last uh, this year, sorry. So National Platform for Women Entrepreneurship, a uh, colleague of mine and, and I, we have, we have been present on this summit and we are really happy that we had opportunity as well to network and to share with the colleagues from, from, from Europe. So we are really appreciating this kind of initiatives and we think that they are number one um, for, for, for networking. That's why we are... 
uh, doing a study visit. Um, next year, there, there will be two study visits, so we will have opportunity to take out uh, the members of our platform to go in European countries. So uh, once again, I invite you, if you have some good practices to, to share with us, uh, we will be really happy to come and to, to visit you so we can organize a couple of days a study visit and to talk about uh, the best practices that you are having. So maybe we can get inspired and uh, shared uh, with, uh, with, with our women entrepreneurs. This is my last slide. Uh, we are talking about promotional activities. We know that on nowadays it's really important to be everywhere and to go social. So that's why we are really active. We have our web platform. Uh, unfortunately, it's only on Macedonian language, but um, I inspire you if you uh, want to visit our YouTube channel and our radio. We have uh, our, um, let's say, we, we um, how to say, we record different kinds of stories because we want to provide space for not only for women entrepreneurs, but in the same time for women working in institutions, for women working in non-governmental organizations. So we are using those kind of channels to give them a space where they will be promoted for free and in the same time to raise their popularity and to, uh, to share among our members what they are doing. Because we can really inspire among our, us some, uh, some women are working in one field and it can be really productive for, for another women. So in this way, we support it, not only the businesses, but in the same time, the work that we are, we are having. We have a mobile application because as I mentioned, we know how, how we are connected with the phones. So by using this mobile application, we are providing all of the information uh, to the women entrepreneurs. And in the same time, we are sharing all of the grants that they can apply, how they can collect the information and so on. And we are keeping in touch with the with our audience by uh, regular newsletters. Uh, this is my my mail. So if someone of you is interesting about further cooperation, I will be really glad uh, to receive mail for you. And then maybe we can organize a meeting afterwards for 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 further steps. Sorry for taking a lot of time, but if you have questions, I will be happy 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 to to answer. Thank you, thank you, Mia. It's always difficult for 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 everyone, I guess, when we want to share should, to share all the different activities. But I, what I very much like what you mentioned, uh, and also Margo mentioned, how important it is to have a wide coverage from 19 counties to have 15 counties present in one program. Uh, all the regions evolved. I think that it's for for a certain initiative, especially uh, for our country, which is a bit small. Uh, it's a pity not to have it a full full coverage. For other countries, I think it's more on a regional level because they're, they're huge. Because it's 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 the the, the power and uh, the energy comes, you know, from bottom up. That's how that's how I see it. And then we have to work top down on how to how to improve the uh, the conditions thank you very much amelia for sharing the uh the national platform uh, for women entrepreneurship experience now just a couple of more minutes with with some questions uh i would like to to uh, loredana uh, we have a question uh, on how how can uh, uh, interested organizations join your platform the data platform, the data atlas, is, does it involve any costs? Uh, how is the pro? How is the procedure? And uh, uh, just just share some information about that. Yeah, it's totally free. It's uh, right free to implement uh, to to log in for a training organization, but also all other organization that uh, would like to implement courses and especially training for women. So it's totally free. Uh, in the web site, there is uh, in Atlas, you click on the Atlas and there will be a section highlighting login. You just log, you just register your name and your uh, email, and then you will, uh, you will uh, receive the credentials to login and to insert the activity you are doing, the activity also that you are looking for, and uh, also the connection that you would like to have, because th this is important. So you can also find and uh, uh, give an advice to find a connection targeted for your needs. So that's totally free. It's created to, to, to make it free. And, and it sounds very, very simple, very straightforward. It's, that's also it's very, very important. Simple. Just yeah. register yourself, you know, like the newsletters, you register mm -hmm. yourself and then you can enter a panel 
where you, you can find, insert your name, insert your description and what you offer. It's very, very easy. Are yeah. there any criteria for, for joining that you have to be of a certain type that you have to, you know, you know, in a, in a sense that that will limit the participants from joining? That's a criteria. The, the, the only criteria that we are uh, um, is is based on the uh, digitalization. So that's it. I mean, it's it's not a, a tool for, for example, uh, soft skill uh, training uh, that are very very important. But it's something connected to the technology and to the digitalization. Mm -hmm. It's a tool that uh, is is born under the Erasmus Plus. Now we are ending this project and the objective, <coughs> our objective and our aim, and it is already the, it's something very uh, real, uh, realistic. We will keep this platform for all the future. So we will keep it. We will maintain it because. We think that it could be a really a very useful tool for everybody and especially for women. Why not? That's, yeah, that's perfect. So, yeah, definitely. And it's always uh, it's always good to have, you know, uh, searching for the right information, finding the right course is very, very difficult. So having this type of resources yeah. is very important, especially that you have such a huge coverage of countries. So thank you very much for, for sharing that. Uh, Margot, you mentioned that Talenta is something that can be replicated sort of or done in other countries as well how uh, yes. how can that be arranged i don't know how can because they choose the countries but uh -huh. uh, if i can i can help to get the uh, the contact with them and i think uh, it would be they would be much more happy to be in other countries mm -hmm. and so it goes uh, through the through the through the cooperative or, or, or the, the the name yes, of, the, of the country Yes, yes, but the other one, um, I'm sorry, just I, I, I read the questions to the mm -hmm. to the panelists, and it's so that, uh, for example, what are the biggest challenges you are facing in daily work? So in the daily work, this is the human res uh, resource, the 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 people who are working with, because uh, for example, my association, in my association, there are women with children, with three children, with two children. And and you know that uh, and and the and the COVID during the COVID, so we had it always so that two three days minimum together per mm -hmm. week. But now in the COVID and 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 in the digitalization, so we are only one day together, and everybody is working from home. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I am a, I am another type because I am fifty six years old. So for me, I need the physical meeting. And it's very bad that uh, I can, I have only one hour or two hours to, to say that what to do and uh, what is the list and, 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 and to speak with each other. And the other one, it's the, the about the I young wanted to keep that, that... For, 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 for the end for everyone to, to share. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I've okay. seen it. No, sorry. no, no worries. But very, thank you very much for the, for the work life balance. And sorry. I do, I do not know. Uh, at the Vgate summit as well, I've seen that it was happening on the on the summit or the annual summit, national summit. Today we also talk about raising the bar. Uh, what is your opinion? In a sense, uh, are we doing enough? How we should um, uh, you know enhance what we are doing? Because we definitely need to raise the bar. Uh, the report shows that, for instance, gender equality will not be reached soon. So it will take a lot of a lot of time and energy to to achieve that. So how how we can do that? Yeah, based oh, on your experience from, from, from the platform, from the council before and everything that was going on at national level. Uh, we were thinking that the continuous work should, should be there and in the same time, not only complaining because we, we are a nation that it's always like, it's easier to complain about the things that we don't have instead of doing and changing the things that we want to have. So I would say that uh, we need more working together because we have lots of organizations, but they are not And uh, to because you know when you want to change some of the things, for example, I will use one example that we had here. Uh, one institution had a grant, and then we disagreed with some of the uh, qualifications needed for the grant. So we needed to discuss and to sit on the meeting with them. But you know, if you go once like a foundation, and I'm talking on the name of the foundation, 
it's not uh, the same voice as you are uh, going there as a, as a group of a national platform with so many members that sign declaration and so on, then, then you are visible and then the institutions have a voice to hear you and maybe to, to learn something from you. I'm not saying that the institutions are not doing a right and correct, but sometimes they need people that will come and then will talk with them and to share. So uh, I would say that it's really important to be visible, uh, to be really um, uh, constant, not doing only one activity or one project and then some of the things and in the same time to listen, to listen to women, to listen to the youngsters and as well to involve different kinds of, of people because you never know what kind of topic can be interesting and which kind of person can help and support the process. So sometimes instead of fighting among ourselves about who is doing what, maybe joining forces and and And, and, and then sharing. continue fighting. fighting. And then continue fighting. <laughs> Once we join the forces. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's right what you said. It's about uh, cooperation, representation, and about listening to each other. I think that's, that's the key for, for many things. Uh, getting back to the question from the audience, what would you, Margot, you know, advise? What would your number one advice be for the young women that want to start their business? Uh, we work always together with students from the university, ladies, female students, and it's very interesting that um, to to share the knowledge to and uh, slowly, slowly they will be alone and active, and uh, they are very successful and they are working in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or in the Ministry of Agriculture. And to what kind of uh, what kind of uh, rat uh, I would like a suggestion to them that they have always know the target. What is the target? And never give it up. And don't don't stop. Okay, they can stop for some things with the family and with the issues, but then go and continue the way to the target. Thank you. That, that that's. That's that's right. Never, never, ever give up if that is something that you want to to achieve. And uh, I, I like what you mentioned. There, stop sometime if there is something else that at the moment is a bigger priority. But you know, let's keep keep the track. Yeah, I like. Would your key message be to young women, to all women, from this uh, webinar? Yeah. The message is, uh, is is connecting maybe to the to the question that I read. Uh, uh, what do you recommend uh, for a young women for a, for a, for young women for women about to starting a startup or a business? Um, I would recommend to uh, launch what you like uh, first of all, what you like to do, what you like to do for your professional career, but also it's something important is for your social point of view. I mean, uh, <clears throat> if you like something that uh, may be uh, restricted on your uh, desire is something. It would be very, very nice that you uh, can do, a can you perform a career that, that you be doing also something good for the other, for the society. That's very important because uh, I, I, I think that uh, many, many women that, that, uh, that are listen to us uh, and that are uh, giving contribution <coughs> for you, Gabriella, for, for you, Emilia, for, for you, Margot, are women that are working, that are like what they do, but they are also working for other people. There, there is something that, uh, that in my mind, that people that like other women, that like other, the society, that can, can help the society. And I also suggest to, before starting a business, to be well informed about the, in my country, it's a little bit <laughs> very important to, to, to inform about the taxation, <laughs> the the tax advantages about uh, women uh, opportunity for tap uh, and about the the needs uh, the of the time i mean uh, you know that the economy is shall is changing then the, the economical uh, sectors uh, needs are challenges uh, many years ago we didn't have a lot of technology knowledge that we have now so now we have to connect with the technology 
technology knowledge, abilities, competencies, and apply to what we like to do. That's what they suggest. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Doing uh, what you like is very important. Liking what you're doing is very important, but also being very practical that is that is what i what i like very much about your message being practical what you do to be good for the society but also be informed about finances be informed about what is happening out there is it's a nice career but it's not an easy career and i also like what margo mentioned try to have a life in between uh, and and i uh, having uh, our guest today and in, in general you can see that you can you can have both you can have all the different things together if you just just love what you're doing and amelia last but definitely not least what would you suggest to to the to the youngsters that want to start their business how we can inspire them um i'm i'm known as a questionable person <laughs> so i will <laughs> so i will say to the youngsters and uh, to, the, to the ladies that want to start their business to question themselves if they're having idea is that the idea really that they want to to do it because sometimes we are living in a world that we are forced just something because it's really nice and it's super cool so we are forced to do the same and to take the same idea so i will say question first yourself and follow your dreams if that idea is really what you want then just do it you don't need anyone uh, to to discuss with or to talk of course you need a consultant and you need a business plan and everything but sometimes when you love what you're doing nevertheless it's a business or it's just a daily then you will be unstoppable and you will achieve all, all of your dreams and everything will come on its place. And I'm always saying that if the plan A is not working, I have a plan B, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> uh, Gabi, you're muted. <laughs> well, if it, it's, it's not a Zoom event, if you're not muted at least once, <laughs> when you're trying to say something, then it's, it's not fun. <laughs> well, thank you, Amelia. Thank you very much. Um, I think that we have come to the, to the end and of this uh, wonderful, wonderful and energizing uh, peer learning webinar and looking forward to all our next editions. Thank you very much, Margo. Thank you, Loredana. Thank you, Emilia, for joining us today. Uh, hope that uh, you've enjoyed it as much as I did, and I hope that the audience enjoyed it as well. There will be soon a recording from the, from the webinar so uh, others can, can have a look at it in their own time. So thank you very much, and let's keep Let's meet again to discuss other things and other new things that we have done in 2023. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, everyone.